It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour as part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they're just going to have a limousine or just going to jail. They're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar today, we're at the Maple Leaf Bar on Oak Street in Uptown New Orleans. The Maple Leaf is actually the longest-running music club in New Orleans. It's been hosting music here for 45 years continuously. You can hear New Orleans' greatest musicians here every night of the week. George Porter is here on Monday nights. The Rebirth Brass Band plays every Tuesday. And the piano giant himself, John Cleary, is playing here at the Maple Leaf every Friday through Jazz Fest. That is definitely worth seeing. So come on, uh, check out something that's going on at the Maple Leaf during the week, anytime you feel like it, or stick around with us here for the next 60 minutes while we enjoy Happy Hour. We have a very interesting bunch of people here. Talk about unrelated by anything whatsoever. Catherine Clematis is here. For the, what number of time has this been on the show? Three or four. Three or four. And what, what is the reason you keep coming back? Because you're in love with me secretly? <laughs> that's or it. That's totally. What, secretly in love with me. That's what it is. That's it. And you've brought somebody with you. You've brought Yvonne Crowens this time. I have, yes. Yvonne, welcome to Happy Hour. Thank you. Good to be here. And, and you guys are here together because you co-wrote a book. Correct. So, Catherine, you drew the... You're, a, you're an artist, so you I drew am. the paintings in this book yes. or the portraits in this book. It's a yes. book of portraits of dogs. dogs. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did you have to get permission from the dog? <laughs> Is there a copyright no. issue with any of this? No, no copyright issue. How do you decide which dog you're going to draw? Uh, that actually was very hard. Uh, we try to stick with the main, most common breeds. Um, and then at the end... Why? Because cause they buy more books? <laughs> well, uh, yes and no. Um, because, you know, if your dog breed is in the book, then... So who, who's, buy, who's buying this book? Dog lovers, mostly. Right. Um, well, not, art, obviously art not dogs. No, so people no who but love we have had dogs. people read them to their dogs. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's that. Um, are you serious? Are these actual dogs or are these out of your imagination? No, no, no. I mean, I look at pictures. Are they, are they someone's like a real dog, though? Do Some do, of them are. Do you do commissions? Yes. So you, how much would it cost me to get a photo of my um, dog painted into a portrait? <laughs> it depends on the size. It's 165 my, and up. 165, that's it? Well, that's for small. Five or seven. For a, for if you a size, have a chihuahua, then it's one sixty. Well, <laughs> yeah. Does it go by the weight of the dog, or no? No, it goes by what size painting you decide to do. Okay, so. that's a pretty good deal. One hundred sixty-five. Aaron Maris is here from the band Cactus Thief. Hey, man, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's so yeah. great to meet you. We're big fans of your music over here. All right. I was trying to describe it to someone this morning, and I couldn't come up with a term for it. Yeah, it's an amalgamation of all the all of the roots. Americana music. I guess Americana is kind of the the, the one fits all term for what we're playing. It's right. a little blues, a little country, a um, little, little old time. And how do you sell that to people who, when you like, if you had to play at the Maple Leaf, what, how do you? Uh, I don't sell it. No, I'm just joking. Do you play here at the Maple <laughs> Leaf ever? We've never played at the Maple Leaf. I've had well, I've played for, with people that have played here. Do you have 25 bucks on you? Because we could probably get you in. <laughs> <laughs> we don't play here. We play out uh, around town quite a bit. Um, we play kind of in the dancing scene. The, the, there's a scene of people like the two-step here in country dance. Right. So we, we gear our set towards that. Um, you know, and we like to get people dancing. And then speaking of that, today's National Waltz Day. I don't know if y'all know this. No, I didn't. It's, it is it. National Marco, Waltz Day. Marco yeah. Nelson is here and knows a lot about all sorts of shit, don't you? <laughs> Did you not, know waltzing, not, no, waltzing. not waltzing, though. Not waltzing. Not waltzing. Are you a dancer? Do you like to dance? I do like to dance, especially what? during Mardi Gras. What sort of dancing do you like to do? Uh, Just drunken? Drunken, late right. night, dancing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mostly. Where did you go over Mardi Gras to do drunken, late night dancing? Uh, mostly at house parties and on the streets. It's, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. We, we always party like right in front of Gracious Bakery on St. Charles and like 6th. Oh, that's down kind of, in the lower garden? Yeah, stuff. that's where we post up, and then, okay. yeah, usually house parties afterwards. That's a pretty expensive yeah. piece of real estate down there. Do you live down there in the fancy part of town? I live in the Irish Channel, so... What, you have to sneak I guess, over. I guess, yeah, we sneak over, mm-hmm. and I guess people... The Irish Channel's changed uh, quite a bit over the last four years since I moved there, but... Um, You've raised the tone of the whole place since you moved <laughs> in? <laughs> well, where, I don't know about that. Where did you move from? Uh, originally, I grew up in Oregon, so Portland, Oregon, but I moved here directly from California, Monterey, so it was a bit of a shocker coming from Monterey, California to New Orleans. What's Monterey, California like? I don't have any idea. Uh, a bunch of rich, retired, retired white people. 
um, so you, you know, golf, right golf courses, vineyards, um, you know, et cetera. So uh, what were you doing the, there? If you were uh, there's a post, or retired. Yeah, there's a Are postgraduate rich, school actually? there. No, 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 I'm not. And you're not retired. <laughs> not retired. No. Um, I, w- I was getting a master's degree. There's a postgraduate school there. I was in the military at the time as an officer, and there's a postgraduate school. I was getting a, a master's degree in IT. What, what grade? Uh, what grade? What rank officer were you? Uh, at that time, I was, I think, a lieutenant command. Uh, I mean, a lieutenant junior grade. Lieutenant yeah. junior. I got o- O2. Yeah. So and what? What did you end up being when you? I ended up as a lieutenant. Yeah. Lieutenant. Yeah, that's what brought me to New Orleans. There's a joint air base, uh, Bell Chase. That's what brought me down here. So you, uh, you like to kill people? Uh, no, not personally. Not really? <laughs> no. So what did you do in the military? What uh, were you in? I started out uh, surface warfare, so I was on a giant amphib surface ship. Surface warfare? Yeah. That sounds like killing people. Well, we transported the, the soldiers who would kill people um, oh, okay. mainly. Yeah, so... Okay. Uh, so you're involved in transporting <laughs> killers around the world. Getting right to it. Yeah, yeah man. I was heavy. like, I, this started out soft with everybody <laughs> else. And, uh, you know. Well, nobody else was in the military. <laughs> if uh, you painted dogs or something, we could have you know, a polite that's, conversation that's, about that's dog true. breeds. Do you have a dog? Uh, no, I do not have a dog. I had a dog before for a, a period to, of time. You have to kill it? Yeah. No. <laughs> what happened to it? I don't kill anything that I don't have to. What happened to your dog? Uh, oh, our dog, we gave it to one of my workers, really wanted it for his son, and we were having our second child, and it just seemed like a good time to give it to somebody who okay, Catherine, do you really wanted it more than us. <laughs> Doesn't that happen, though? People have kids, and then the dog suddenly gets down yes. the food chain. That's why I have one of my dogs, actually. Because it was traded in for yeah. a child. Well, she was dropped off at a shelter because they were having a baby, and they just decided they couldn't handle it, Yeah. so they dropped her at 11 months old at a shelter and she wow. sat there for two months which was kind of sad because um, she's a great little dog I mean we love her but yeah I mean but we don't think any less a, of you Marco just because you're no, cool and heartless mean, he, and he found a place for his dog that's different right you they gave it to a good home yeah. Yeah. these yeah. other people that's just dropped it off thing. at the yeah, yeah. right yeah. I got a dog the same way I got a dog exactly the same way people mm-hmm. had a baby and they couldn't deal with the dog and gave it to me right. and then right. it got cancer and died so yeah. I hope that my dog helps with our child's care when, when I... Do you, have, do you have a dog or kids? I have a dog and a wife. Okay, that's a start. No, no baby yet. Are you planning on that, Aaron? We're planning on it all right. Is that right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, you're working that. Oh, up. yeah. Okay. What's the deal? Are you a professional musician? Uh, I'm a semi-professional musician. Yeah. I make, I make a decent portion of my income playing music, but I'm also right. a uh, full-time woodworker. I build custom furniture. Yeah. Wow, that's how, do you really? Yeah. I don't have a. I, I found when I get too much ambition with music, it just fucks me up. I'm and better what, keeping my really? garden nice and relaxed and just letting stuff happen how it happens. And I kind of, I stay happy that way. And Otherwise, stay creative that way. Put too much pressure on yourself. Get to too much pressure on the doodle, man. Can't you know? Right. Too much ambition. I think it's. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> well, at some point though, if you started making enough money from just playing music, you wouldn't have to be a woodworker. But it's nice to have another. There's a lot of great musicians who would do other stuff. Yep. I'd, I'd still build stuff anyway, probably. I just have a right. kind of just want to do right. it. You know, if I made enough money, yeah, I would definitely work less in the woodshop for sure. Have you ma- ever made a guitar? No. Are you thinking about I'd, doing it? I've made a gourd banjo before. A gourd banjo? A gourd banjo, yeah. You didn't bring that with you, did you? Did not. That so. would be amazing. <laughs> so what sort of stuff do you build? What sort of um, what, furniture? Uh, what, are the, what people pay me for, really. Um, and if I, if I don't know how to do it, I'll say that I can and then figure it out. Right. <laughs> like know? what sort of stuff? Like tables and chairs? Um, tables, uh, bookshelves, uh, Murphy beds. Um, I do a lot of restoration of old stuff. You how know, repair pe- stuff, carve stuff. How many people have a Murphy bed? I want a Murphy bed. I just Yvonne built one. It was a son of a bitch. It made me. <laughs> it really made me want to start playing music full time. Because right? <laughs> it's like basically what we call a sort of a pull out sofa type. This one was thing. a double. It had a, it had a it was a Murphy bed and it had a table that dropped down Jeez. off the Murphy bed. It was like a, it was a double whammy. Well, that's very that's awesome. <laughs> inventive. Yeah, what they want that for? They live in a tiny apartment. They they had like a home studio. Uh, they were designers and they used their home as also her 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 office space. So she needed the room to convert into, you know, to be like an office space for her employee. But when her daughter came home, she needed it to pop down into a Murphy bed. So that was the uh, hmm. scenario. Where would you buy one of those if you didn't want to get it professionally um, custom built by you? You could find them pretty easily in Wayfair. And, why didn't and, you do that? Why did she decide to get you to build it? 
Uh, Too much money? She got, she got hooked on my uh, building Instagram, and she just, I don't know. What's your <laughs> she, Instagram account so we can go find it? Uh, the Tooth and Claw Restoration is my building Instagram. Tooth and I'm actually and locked claw. out of that, so I haven't posted on anything. I got a new phone, and I forgot my password, and I can't remember it. And then I had an, I had an Apple iCloud thing, and then I don't have an Apple phone anymore, and I can't get into my thing. And you so I'm, I'm locked out of my Instagram account. You can't call, like, Instagram someone tech no, support and they tell you you that, can't do that no so you'll never be able to get it to if i one day ever. remember the password maybe i could get can, back there's in. no thing forgot my password <laughs> on instagram you can there is a thing but it's sent it to the uh the apple icloud and then i'm i'm also locked out of my apple icloud so okay so this is the obvious question <laughs> that i have to ask at the end of this conversation it's too do many you, passwords do you smoke a lot of weed <laughs> Well, I do smoke weed. Do you think yeah, that's got that, something that to, has do nothing to do with forgetting everything? No, that has nothing to do with the nothing. password. It has nothing to do with having to remember 60, 65 passwords. Everybody remembers passwords. Marco, do you have many passwords? You must have a, you've got a startup business, right? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of passwords. Right. Yeah. So how do you organize them? Um, I use a variation of a couple different symbols mm -hmm. and numbers. That, and for everything? Yeah. So somebody could hack into everything once they figured it out? Well, they'd have to do different combos of it. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how do you know which one's which? Like, we have the same, all our stuff here for INO Broadcasting, the company that makes this show and all these other shows. We have the same password for everything. Same one? Same one. Across the board? The same password yeah, for dangerous. everything that we do. <laughs> every Instagram, every Twitter, that's Facebook, yeah. our, our PayPal account, everything. Why are you saying that? You want to know what it is? <laughs> One, two, three, four, fake street. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the word password. That way everybody can remember it. But, so how do you remember yours? You write them down somewhere, I, right? Well, I have, yeah, I have a file that has a bunch of them in there, so in case I don't remember it, I can always go right. uh, to that file. I did start so, doing that. I do yeah. have that now. You have that now, yeah. after you're locked out of everything. Yeah. After <laughs> I have so you're late. Yeah. How do you do yours, Catherine? You're pretty organized. App. You have an app. I have an app that's for, like password with like fingerprint. And I, With your fingerprint? Yeah, and I walk in. See, I'm too scared app. to do the fingerprint thing. I know, but you know, I mean... What? I, I just... It, it works, and it makes my life a lot easier. That's interesting, because I've always assumed it's not going to work. That's why I couldn't yeah, be bothered now, messing around Yeah, I will say, I did... Yesterday morning, I woke up to an email from Netflix saying that your p email has been changed and your password has been changed. Uh -oh. And if this if wasn't, that wasn't you, you, let me know. You know, yeah. try to log into your Netflix account, which of course I couldn't. And so I had <laughs> to call Netflix, whatever, customer service. You spoke to a human being at Netflix? Well, I mean, yes, but they were not in this country. And hmm. trying to spell and explain my last name to somebody who does not speak English is, is a very It doesn't long... have any bizarre letters in it, though. It's <clears throat> no, Clamitis, but they... K-L-I. How do you spell it? Clamitis, K-L-I-M-I-T-A-S, but they don't. I'm sorry, say that again. K... <laughs> exactly. What? Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. It, do you do uh... two letters at a time? K-L... Oh, yeah. And, I you know, am... How do you spell it? M as in, you know, Mommy. whatever. Yeah, right. And so, anyway. Yeah, it was a good 45 minutes on the Are phone. Are you serious? Just to get okay, my... So... Netflix Get your account Netflix back. back. So why would somebody want to steal your Netflix? I have no idea. I have no idea. Doesn't seem like a big thing. If you're that good no. at hacking shit, you think you could do better than Netflix. You, you would you could think. get into your bank account or something. That's so what right. are you watching on Netflix? It's so important that you have to get it back instantly. I mean, I just, uh, what did I watch last? <laughs> oh, we watched uh, The Pharmacist. What's Ooh. that like? Yeah. Is that good? Have you seen that, Aaron? I've heard quite a bit about Me it. Me too. Have it you seen great. that, Marco? I haven't seen it. We just watched The Stranger. Which is Stranger. I hear Stranger. That's good. Wait, it was good. I hear that's yeah, good. that's good. Well, we're yeah. all going to have a lot of time to watch Netflix because we're all going to be quarantined in our house. I got a question, please. though. <laughs> yes. Why are you afraid of the fingerprint? Thumbprint? I just assume it's not going to work. Oh. That's why. I'm oh. just assuming I'm going to do it and set it up and then it's not going to work and then yeah. I'm going to be. Oh, it's great. Fun. And then the facial it recognition totally... is even yeah. better. Well, facial recognition doesn't work at all, though. Oh, it works. I have this. Samsung doesn't work for you either. Well, I can't hold the phone far enough away. Ah. I know that sounds ridiculous. Works for my yeah. Because it works your arms are too short. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was I was thinking about you actually today, earlier today. Nothing okay. weird. Okay. I, I heard this thing on, on NPR on the news, about some guy. Did you guys hear any of this about a guy who's invented or invented or discovered a cure for blindness? Mm -mm, not no. that I know you're not blind. Oh, with CRISPR. Yes, with CRISPR. Yeah. Did you hear that, Marco? I, yeah, I did. I saw okay, that. Okay, so what's the story with that? Uh, essentially, uh, they changed the DNA uh, to remove blindness if you had it in your DNA. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
So, cool. so, so that's only if it's genetic blindness. Yeah, not if you like, you know, got something in your eye and. <laughs> no, but if you have a, ge a genetic right. disorder, yeah, they could, they could then. change your DNA so with CRISPR. Could it, so you have a genetic disorder, right? I Is do, it, I do. And okay, they, so could they do this too? Um, theoretically, <laughs> and and they have been working on that for a really long time. Ah, uh, so they. Um, but okay. the problem is that with my disease, the genes mutate in different ways. So it's not like blindness is one gene, it mutates one certain way. So you've got a this number is like of a genes. very different, yeah. yeah. Do you know what they are? Have they isolated? I don't remember what they are. No, I, mean, not, yes, I wouldn't each, know what they were each, either, but I mean, do they know? Oh, yeah. Well, what they do is they do genetic testing on you and then right. um, you're typed because this disease has a lot of different types. And... What do they type? Hot, cold? No, it's like numbers. It's like one, two, three. Four, what are you? I am a uh, three. You're a three? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that good or bad? Uh, it's not great. It's not great. It's not no. great. What's I a mean, good I'm number? not dead, so it's not horrible. <laughs> um, what but, is that? But well, yeah, I mean, it's like one step above dead. It's one step above dead. So, so you're I one mean, step above dead. Yeah, I mean, it's you only not... You've got one more number and you'll be dead. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Holy shit. How far is it between three and four? Is there like a lot? Well, line? actually, so this is the really screwed up there, thing. Aren't they random? Yeah, they don't go in They're order. Random. So They're random. So two is actually like you die either in utero or, you know, shortly after you're born. As a two. <coughs> so you, wouldn't a two. Want, you wouldn't want to be a two then. Okay. No. All right. No. So that's One is unlike. actually the best to have. Four is like. So you got, hang on, hang on. One is the best and then mm -hmm. two is dead. <laughs> What kind of a scale is this? I don't think I it's don't, a scale. I don't know. It's, it's not a scale. Right? I don't know. They started. That might be where they started. And then they were like, oh, there's a three and a four. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah we already, like, well, one was good and then two is dead. What are we going to do with three? Right. Well, I feel like, you know, they discovered the one and they discovered the two and they were like, oh, crap, there's some in between. Let's just add. Instead of doing 1.1 1. Right. 1 or 1. 1.2, which you right, could do. Right. Well, perhaps they're not scientists. Either. Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this disease has been... It can be traced back to the Egyptians, so <clears throat> it's been around a while. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. So yeah. people have survived with it f oh, yeah. for a long time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And what's it called again? Osteogenesis imperfecta. Okay. It's a good Brittle name. bone disease. Brittle bone disease. Yes, okay. So simple. is there a chance that they could oh, use right. the same CRISPR technology to make you um, cured? I don't know. There, there's a lot of um, stem cell research going on for it where they would harvest your stem cells, edit them. Yeah, basically. but this is different, though. This I know, is not I know, so I don't know. This is they drip it right into your brain right. or something. So I don't know if that's something they It's pretty at. exciting. I don't really keep up with it because, quite honestly, unless it works, it really doesn't matter to me. Right. So, I mean, yeah, what are you going to do about right, it? Just exactly. academic so, information. I, mean, I don't really care. But, it, but it apparently, <laughs> did, did you, I didn't hear this the end of this thing, does it work? Is the guy that they did this to, this experimental blind person, now able to see, do you know? Uh, I didn't get that far into it. I, I had a, a buddy who's a doctor, and he's all into this CRISPR. He thinks CRISPR is the future, and, like, we're what all going to What kind of be, a doctor is he? Um, I, think he I think he, like, um, interviews psychopaths in oh, California. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. He must the, know is a that lot. the right kind of doctor for this <laughs> I don't I, No, not think so, but he would always bring this up because like a year ago and I was like, what are you talking about? This is crazy. And then I saw this article, I just like glanced at it because I was like, oh, maybe this is like going to be real sometime soon. Um, it's pretty exciting. I should probably call him up and ask him like, what the heck's going on Why here? does he interview psychopaths? Is he just <laughs> interested in that sort of thing? I, I think he's on the scale, so he might be a little bit... He's trying to save the world. Uh, <laughs> we know what he's watching on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. What does he What does he do this time? As a doctor, is he really working in, in the prison system somewhere? Or something? Yeah, I think it's uh, outside San Francisco. I'm not sure exactly where. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. How did you meet him? Uh, I was doing an MBA at Tulane, and he was doing an MBA and getting his medical degree at the same time. And, and you already had a degree from this other place that I you know. Were I was at. just going to ask, how many degrees do you have? Uh, three. <laughs> what and are I, they? And I hate what? school with a passion. So, okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's a good time waste today. <laughs> it saves you getting a real job. I didn't pay for any job. of them, so I, I don't feel bad about it. Who actually. paid for them? We paid for the one while you, you were in the military. Uh, you guys, <laughs> so you, you owe it to you, all of us. You guys us. paid for all, of the, all three of them, all actually. Of them. Yeah, Did under, undergrad was at the Naval Academy, which is, is paid for, and then the postgraduate school in Monterey, where I got a master's in IT, was paid for by the government, and then Tulane, I had the GI Bill and Tulane was, was paid for, got an MBA there. So, so he's buying drinks for the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah, <laughs> and you didn't even have to kill anybody. I think, I think you guys, uh, I think everybody listening for uh, my, my three degrees. 
in That's Japan. exciting. So you have three, you have an undergraduate and two postgraduate degrees. Yeah. And are you using any of them, actually? No, they were all uh, a giant waste. Just a complete waste. And, and I still tell people uh, it's a waste, yeah. Um, so how much did you spend <laughs> of the taxpayers' money on that? Because uh-huh. Tulane itself is, God only knows. Two, a lot, yeah, Tulane's uh, two years, a uh, hundred grand. Uh, I'm, sure okay. the t- I'm sure the two-year master's in Monterey was probably, uh, uh, you know, a hundred. Uh, I mean, I was getting paid my salary full, my salary for the two years as well as How much degree. do you get if you're a lieutenant in the uh, surface war? Yeah, at, at that time there, I was probably making like 75, 80K. And so they, Are you they, serious? they paid me that, and they paid, and I was just a full time student for the two years. They're paying you $80,000 a year yeah. to go to school. To go to school, and the school. And you pay your tuition yeah. as well. Yeah. So that was probably a couple hundred grand. And do and then, they have a deal with you afterwards? <laughs> like, because they paid all that money, you have to come out and do something? Yeah, I, I had to do one three year tour, which ended up luckily being down here. So I had to serve three years as payback down here in New Orleans to pay back, pay back for that. And that's, what, good, that's a good payback. Yeah. yeah. It worked out well. Yeah. As, a, as opposed to like Iraq or Afghanistan. Yeah, all, all my buddies from the Naval Academy had like been back and forth to Iraq or Afghanistan two or three times on deployments. And they're just writing me letters like, we hate you, you bastard. And you got sent to New Orleans? <laughs> yeah. yeah my you? husband was active duty military. Was, it, yeah. so was he? You paid for a lot of his, but he served 23 years. So. Yeah. So he's, what did he have he's to still do? getting money. A lot. He had to go across oh, to yeah. Afghanistan? I, I don't right? know half of what he had to do. But he was across. He was in Afghanistan and Iraq on the tour. Yes, wow. he but was. He, but he couldn't tell you what he did. Um, some things he can't tell me what he did. No. Does he wake up in the middle of the night screaming? He doesn't, but he does have PTSD. He does. Yeah, he was in some very touchy situations. I think. Wow, and what did we get? Career, out of, military, twenty-three years. What did we years? get? What? Oh, career, not in Korea, but career. No, no, career. What do not- you think we got out of his pain and suffering exactly? I mean, the freedom to sit here and talk. I mean, if, we, if he hadn't gone over there, would the Afghan population have overrun the United States of America? Well, or not something? just one person, but... Do, do they believe that, these guys, though? Do you believe that, Marco? What, what, that you, believe the, you, what? Are, you are the only thing that stood between us and being subjugated by terrorists? Um, I would say I do believe that the, the, the United States... Uh, going elsewhere um, prevents um, things from happening in the United States, uh, and which affects people who live here a lot less than uh, if things were happening on U.S. soil, is, is, is probably my, my take on it. It seems like a huge <laughs> price to pay. There's a lot of people who have yeah. to go over there and do this. It is a big price and to pay, especially when you lose your life. Yeah, I've, I've have, I graduated in two th- the year 2000 from high school, so a lot, I had a lot of friends that went in as... Um, right before 9-11 happened. And I have multiple friends that have come back PTSD. One of my best childhood friends killed himself. And I have other friends that died in combat over there just because of my age. You're probably around the same age. Yeah, right? same year. I yeah, yeah. graduated right yeah. after 9-11, year yeah. after. So. And where did, you, where did you grow up, Aaron? Well, I was born in, in Rochester, New York. And then in 1996, my family moved here. My my dad's brother was already here. He was a chef in New Orleans. And hmm. my dad and my uncle opened a restaurant here. So my, I've one? been here since now. It was called Gerard's Downtown. Uh, my uncle's Gerard Maris. He was, he was um, worked for the Brennan family a long time. Yeah, okay. And his son, Zach Maris, is in my band with me, Cactus Thief. Yeah. Okay, talking of which, what about playing us a song? Oh, we're ready for that already? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, what do you think? Yeah. We get heavy so, on the military stuff. Got to well, we'll come back to up, we'll come back to killing people in a minute. But I'd rather not. So okay, we'll, we'll move on from that completely. So this music that you, so you write the music, or you and Zach write the music together? Well, I, it it started out with me writing the music, and um, then I wanted to be in a band with a bunch of my friends and my you know my family, and so over time we we're uh, more songwriters have come in the band. Zach got prolific, and we started to play Zach songs. And now our fiddle player is starting to write tunes, and hopefully we're going to start getting some oh, cool. of his songs in the band as well. So the album that I heard on the one I stole off of Spotify... Two Bells. It's called Two Bells, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. great record. Thank you. Yeah, I put a lot, of, lot, of, lot into that Yeah, record. it's really great. Yeah, it was a really wonderful time. I'm sorry that Andrew Duhon's not here today, because yeah. that would have been great for you guys. Yeah, to he, he, yeah we know together. each other. He, he knows that record. Yeah, that's a very, very good record. It's very interesting. Thank so you. So what, are you going to play anything off of that today? Can we? I could, yeah. What there, are you thinking of playing? Um, Which one do you there's like? There's a tune called Nicotine. Yeah, that's pretty fun to play. Okay. And um, it was one of the first tunes that I wrote for for the record. Let me see if I can get in shape here. Um. 
Hold on, let me get let me get do a little acrobat. Okay. Here, little warrior acrobatics. Let's see. All, All right. right. Well, I don't smoke, but I'll smoke with you Nicotine, it'll kill you, but hallelujah And if you're drinking, I'm drinking too A New Orleans could kill you, hey hallelujah You ain't gonna do me right But you're so much fun, I can't deny We'll go around a couple hundred times before I cloud up this old life. Before I cloud up this old life. Well, I know where I am, it's understood. I need a friend, bad, you don't have to be good. It's a lonely life, walking that straight line. Yeah, them hypocrites, they are the loneliest kind. You ain't gonna do me right, but you're so much fun, I can't deny. We'll go around a couple hundred times before I cloud up this old life. Before I cloud up this old life. You want to hear the third verse? Yes. Well, them southern bells come walking by Well, they're real pretty with their nose held high well, The Savior walked with thieves and fools Well, he spoke to the devil and told the truth That you could search forever and you won't find A shade of black without a speck of light at the deepest hell of the coal mine Comes that lucky fellow that makes your light shine Comes that lucky fellow that makes your light shine You ain't gonna do me right But you're so much fun I can't deny We'll go around a couple hundred times Before I cloud up this old life before I cloud up this old night. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. What do you think of that? Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that shocking? Mm-hmm. Were you surprised, Catherine? I like it. I be, you're I the person who has to make... You're, you're the love music fan music. here. I love country music. Too. I know. That helps. You're yeah. a big country Thank fan. You. Thank you. Yeah. Would you call that country, Catherine? folky than country, but I mean... I mean, country. what's country? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> what's country today, these days? Like, I mean, country is basically pop on the radio right. today. With well, the country's got such a bad... Accent. Yeah. Is that... <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you listen to the radio. Are you still following Sugarland around? Uh, when they tour, yeah. <laughs> You're like yeah. a groupie. I am. Still. I am. Okay. Well, but doesn't uh, Aaron have a beautiful voice, though? Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks really for saying beautiful so. voice. Thank you hear it, really. I appreciate it. That's great. Thank you. What did you think, Yvonne? I thought it was awesome. Isn't that cool, Mark? Don't you think to sit here and you're talking to some guy and he's like, you know, some regular guy, and then he just picks up a guitar and can do that? That was it's beautiful. a nice voice. Yeah, it's yeah. a really nice voice. It's impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I got to come to a show, man. I got to get the give us the dates. Do you want to know some show dates? I do. Yeah. yeah. I want to okay. check it out. So March 12th, we're putting on a real honky tonk banger at the Carnival Lounge. Okay. The doors at nine. We're playing with Gail Holiday and the Honky Tonk Review. And Who's Cactus playing Thief. first? Cactus Thief is playing first because we have teachers in the band and they got to get up early. That's great. So you can get in and hear the band and get out. We'll, we'll play at ten. And, um, yeah, that should be a good one. We're going to have some new songs. That's at Carnival. It used to be Carnival called... Carnival. It used to be Siberia. Siberia. So why is it not called Siberia? What happened there? I think they just got new ownership. They just yeah. moved on. I okay. think so, yeah. It's confusing. It's Carnival with an A. It's a great makes... venue. They have a good sound system there. At least I've, we've had great shows at Siberia. We haven't played yeah. since it's been Carnival. But... but it's the same stuff altogether. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's March the 12th. 
March 12th, Which is yeah. perversely, what, a Thursday or something? It is. It's my birthday. It is, It's your yeah. birthday. Yes. Hello. What? Catherine. Yes. <laughs> I'm 11. I'm what? the 11th. Hey, my wife's birthday Hi. is the 11th, March 11th. Yours is the 11th, Marco? Yeah. So you guys we should got go to a birthday jam there. We should. <laughs> Why don't you guys have fun. a joint birthday party? At his, at his show. Yeah. With your yeah. wife. Sure. <laughs> she won't be okay. there. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. So um, what star sign does that make the both of you? Pisces. Pisces, is that a good one? I think so. I is. like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have much choice. I mean, it's fine. So might as well it's like water, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's water. Yeah. What does it mean, I'm Pisces? Water it's too. a fish sign. I don't know. It's a fish, fish. sign. You don't believe in that bullshit? Well, I mean, yeah. I do to an extent. You do but, to an extent. But, do you? But, what you know, extent exactly? Well, I mean, you know, it, you are who you are, whether you're Pisces or. Yes, but the, you're have, the you, rat been, or have you been made that by the motions of planets in I the don't universe? Know. or? Sure. I don't know. You, so, give, you give the meaning to the stories you want. You, well, give, yeah. you give the I story's mean, powers. But I'm you, a live in the day kind of person, not a like a. But you have an app? Like a horoscope? I, I don't. So you don't believe in it at all? Not particularly. Okay. Not really. Marco, do you? Because you're more of a science guy. I. I I never did, and then I have two children now, uh, a boy and a girl. My, my daughter is, was born in June, which is... Uh, Gemini. Gemini, which, like, split personality, and she definitely <laughs> has a split personality, and it's what crazy. What date was she born? <laughs> June 16th. 16th, okay. Yeah. So she'll wake up and, like, cry over her Cheerio being broken, and then she'll be happy, like, ten minutes later. Well, and then my, my son's December, and he's just, like, chill. And What's that, Capricorn? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't Sagittarius even know. And, Capri- yeah. and Capricorn, okay. I think. And yeah. we have a couple other friends who've had children, like, in June and in December. And, like, December children are always, like, chill. And the Junes are just yeah. mental. So I'm kind of like, maybe there's something to this. Yeah, my husband's I don't know. December. He's pretty chill. And what are you, Yvonne? <laughs> I am the mother of the Zodiac. I'm Cancer. Is that the mother of the Zodiac? Mm-hmm. Cancer, okay. Very nurturing. All right, Aaron. Learning. So you're the last one. I'm an Aries, but I've heard, I've heard the that- real New Ages say it's really about your moon sign. Yes. Oh, so the whole thing's off. So, uh, so there's, now all, gotta, there's multiple uh, okay. things that are happening, you know. But I'm an Aries. I don't know if I'm an Aries. I've, I've had people straight up call me out as an Aries before. So people have picked it. Yeah, real, real new ages, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. What's the uh, giveaway trait that you I don't have? know. I mean, I'm the ram, but I'm, I don't see myself as being a um, ram type So, do you, Catherine, as a dog expert, oh, Lord. do dogs have... Personality? Oh yes. Oh yeah. I mean, so each breed. So are they sure. gov- each breed? Yeah, yeah, but we're we're a human breed. Well, right. We all have different personalities. That's we, true. So does it, each dog have its own? Oh, like, absolutely. And is it governed by the horoscope as well? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never. Most of my dogs are rescues. I don't know what one month they were born in. Yeah, so that's I the don't thing. know that I can uh, say. About, I don't know. Do you know? I have dogs? no idea. So, about dog what horoscopes. did you have to do with this book? Did you write the text? I wrote the text for each dog. Yes, I yeah, interviewed. So she can answer that better. You interviewed the dogs? Sometimes, almost. Okay. Not quite. <laughs> I interviewed dog owners for each breed, about two to three per breed. How did you get this? How did you get this job? <laughs> because I'm friends with Catherine. That's all it took. <laughs> no, she knew I've that known I had Catherine a passion. For years. Catherine, you didn't ask <laughs> she me. She didn't to ask write you anything. to write the book. She might like me better. Um, <laughs> she knew that I liked to write. It was, it's a passion. Have you written anything in the past? I have written a lot, but just never published. Really? So, what did you write that hasn't been published? Was it now? This is children's now stories, poems, uh, working on a, some nonfiction things. I just haven't ever published anything. And I've and I've have you tried to get it published and got no, rejected? No, I've never. I've never. Reject, you never tried. You just wrote a whole children's book and then put it in your drawer. I have a lot of stuff on my computer. Why? Why is that? Are you like? I don't know. Nervous why. about. I think I think there. probably some of it was fear of failure, maybe not the right opportunity, and I just kept, you know, being a mom and working, and and then Catherine told me about this book, and I'm a dog lover as well. I have two rescues. I've always had dogs in my life, and I thought, this sounds like a fun project. And how old are your kids? 16 and 11. Okay. And have they seen the children's book you wrote? They've heard a couple of them. Right. They you like, read them to them? They like them. That I've gotten some feedback from a group that, right. you know, was not so positive, so I kept re- restructuring it. Of course, my children like it, though. I'm their mom. It's hard putting out your own stuff that you hold yeah. close. It, it is, really well, is. Well, yeah, you yeah. know, well, as How do you artist. feel as a songwriter? Some, some t- in my past, when I was a little more naive and I was just a little more fearless about it, you know, and that kind of got me to the point, you know, where I am now, where I have a little bit of comfort because I've been doing it. 
but I find now that it's a little it's a little bit harder now um, to not to put out something unless I really know it's good because I put out something that's good before. Right. And in the past, I was just like, I don't care. I'll do anything. I'll put out anything. You know, I have I have a lot of recordings from when I was young that are just do you have, terrible. We had this conversation with Andrew recently, and his his take on the world is that most people live with what he calls debilitating self doubt. Do I'm I sorry he's not here. Do you have that as a songwriter? Um, you think everything no, is crap that you do? No, I don't. I I kind of I get a lot of enjoyment and self-fulfillment out of my songs and it, it makes my own life meaningful despite what other what the outside world kind of thinks and that kind of sustains me you know I don't think I don't think it's crap but I know the difference between a good making a good record and making a bad record so as far as the music that I write I don't I don't I like the music that I write because it means something to me but I know what it is to make a good record, and I know what it is to make a bad record, and I don't want to put up bad records. No, you don't. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> and not it's hard. I'm... It's not easy to put out a good record. So that's, that could be a little, right. a little debilitating, right. you know. So. Did you go to school for any of this, or did you just no, pick it up? No, I've just been... I've just been um, Self-taught. Yeah, self-taught. And Yvonne, you went to school. You're a lawyer, actually. I went to school. The, the research part of it probably helped me, and right. that's I like to research Have a lot. Have you ever been a lawyer, actually? For three years, and then I started to be pulled around the country by my husband, who was active duty military, and then uh, growing a family, and then right. came home, and my dad was sick. So I only practiced for a few years. Where are you from originally? Here? Mm-hmm. So New you, Orleans. You get to come. You got, is your husband out of the military now? He is. He has been out for a while. He's retired. What's well, he doing retired now? from the military, not retired completely. Right. What's he doing now? Um, he actually most recently, he is switching jobs right now, but was most recently a program manager for a tech company. Aha, uh-huh. because you're in tech as well, Marco, right? I am, yeah. You've got a tech startup company. Yeah. Okay, it's called R- Rent Check, is that, that right? That's right. Okay, can you give us like the elevator pitch on what it is? <laughs> yeah, so Rent Check is a mobile app that standardizes move in, move out inspections to help residents get their security deposit back. So if you've ever rented and you give a security deposit to your landlord, then you go to move out and they're like, they don't sorry, you don't get it back. Right, because there's a scratch on the door. So yeah, or they, they that. Make, up, make up some stuff, yeah. Oh, I had a bad experience in law school with that. I'm sure uh, a lot of people have. Yeah. What happened? I, I clean better than anybody. I've had people, when I moved out of places, ask me, what service did you use? And I said, me. And they're like, oh, because we were going to rent them. I said, no, I'm not out for hire. It's me. Wow. That's just so how I am. So you're a good cleaner. Okay. And these people need- Correct. I cleaned the whole entire apartment, and the manager that was there previously had said I could leave the dining room table. I didn't need it any longer. I said, I'll move it out, gladly move it out, but if somebody can use it, I'll leave it. And she said, no, 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 leave it. The next person will probably use it. The apartment was spotless. Well, in the meantime, between me cleaning the apartment and her saying that, she got fired and somebody new took over. And then they wanted to charge me however X amount of dollars because I left trash in the apartment. Oh, wow. I said, no, 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 no. But of course, you know, having just graduated from law school, you would have thought that I would have gotten that in writing. <laughs> but I guess, <laughs> yeah. guess I didn't learn that. I don't know. <laughs> so does your, does your, is it an app? Yeah, it's a mobile app. Yeah. And it's called Rent Check. Rent Check, Okay, yeah. so if I'm a renter, yep. I download this app. And then when I go to rent an apartment off someone, I say to the landlord, hey, listen here, asshole, I need you to... No, Sign up on my app. You no, know, so actually, the, How's that the, yeah, the resident actually uses it. So you just download RentCheck at getrentcheck.com, uh, okay. and then you enter in like the you know the details of the property, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. And then our app actually provides a guided walkthrough that tells you walks you through the the, the the property, tells you what to take photos of, asks you questions. You follow this whole guided walkthrough, take the photos, everything, and then it creates a report and sends it to your landlord for you and says, hey, this is what it looked like when I moved in. You do the same at move out, you compare the photos, and if it looks the same, you get all your deposit back. Uh, if anything changed, then they can put in why well, uh, things not, have changed. You're still not going to get your deposit back if he doesn't want to give it to you. Uh, well, It's uh, not a contract, right? It's just a, well, it's a bunch of photos that says before and after. That's if the landlord's not using it, but every state has laws that said the landlord must give you an itemized deduction list of mm-hmm. why they're keeping your deposit. And so if they don't uh. have... They don't have reasons, uh, and you have proof that they don't have reasons, then uh, you would win. And, and I know this because my co-founder, Lydia, who I met at Tulane, she was doing her, getting her law degree at the, uh, at the same time I was doing an MBA. Uh, I was pitching this idea, and she was in the process of suing her landlord 
and she represented herself in court and she won because of timestamp photos. And so that's kind of, we took that I with my see. experience and put it into a mobile app because everybody has a nice camera on their M phone. Most times when I, I've been through this and I'm sure everyone has the, probably much the same experience, it, you just give up because it costs too much to pursue this. Well, that's what happens a lot. Th that's what happened yeah. with me. It was like they were taking t one or a hundred, two hundred dollars out and I'm, that wasn't worth my time or By the end of the day, you're like, oh, you know yeah. what? Fuck you. I don't care. Right. And you yeah. just walk away. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And we researched that and we found that most people do that because they don't have the time or the resources. Right. And annually, this comes to about, you know, $6 billion that residents across the U.S. feel that they've lost unjustly Six in security billion. deposits. $6 billion. There's $60 billion annually in deposits and $6 billion renters feel like they lost for unjust reasons. And okay. so we want to provide the tools and the data so that anybody who feels like they're getting screwed over has the proper documentation to get back their deposit. So if this works, yep. you could be responsible for recovering $6 billion a year? Yep. And what are the chances of that working out? Um, I think right now 50-50, but we'll see. Okay, so <laughs> even if you actually, it's three even billion. Even if it's one billion. Yeah. You know, yeah, right. I mean, you know, a startup, uh, you know, you hear about companies all the time and you've seen a million apps in the app store. It's a, it's a difficult path to take a product and take and it nationally. And there's like conglomerate kind of ownership of yeah. the, the platform, isn't that correct? Like, um, like Google and the big platforms kind of take everything up, like the, the space. I'm sorry, you no, heard, I don't no. remember my passwords, but is there something to that? <laughs> no, it's a guy who doesn't know his passwords. No, right? not really. I mean, most likely if, if we're successful and keep doing well, like a larger company will want to acquire buy, us, buy, buy us, and you, yeah. put right. us into, you know, hopefully we wouldn't sell to a company that just wants to shut us down and not use us, because we, we feel like this is something that renters across the U.S. deserve, uh, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not being treated fairly, and, and we want to make that happen across the U.S., so. And how do you make any money out of it? So uh, the, the funny thing is, is we actually make money. We charge the property managers a monthly fee to use our product. So property managers. <laughs> so, yeah. So property managers. Why is it good for property managers? So it just standardizes everything? So it standardizes everything. And two, most property management companies, uh, you know, are managing properties for property owners. Okay. Uh, and in their contracts, they're required to go document these properties, do annual oh, periodic makes inspections, their life easier. and make sure they have documentation. Yeah. So if there's a problem, they don't get sued. So instead of them driving all over to all these different properties, they just send, send requests out to their residents, the residents do it. And in turn, actually, residents take better care of properties when they use our product because they're thinking like, oh, this landlord cares about me. Like, they want to give me back my deposit. I'm going to take care of it. If you go in being like, hmm. I'm going to get screwed out of my deposit, then like, you're going to treat the property as if you're not going to get your deposit back. I think right? on the flip side, too, you could create a culture change with that because the property owners, the apartment complex owners, will not try to screw people as much as they would because yep. they do that all the time, particularly yep. if you're younger or, you know, if you don't know, if you're innocent and you have no idea, they really try to put the screws to you and keep that deposit. That's It's like a it's a business for them, really. I've heard a lot about it. And so it might be a culture shift that now that somebody is onto that and watching them and posting things that can be used against them might twist that a little bit. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping. Right now at this stage, we're an early company. We're targeting the landlords, property management companies that are the good ones, want right. to treat the residents fair, want to give back the deposits. Uh, and so eventually, if we get all of them, then it'll force those bad apples, essentially, to right. treat residents fair so as well. So what are you doing for a living in the meantime? Uh, well, I, I, you know, we we raised uh, some, we, we raised some some capital from investors, so I can actually pay myself oh, uh, awesome. a, little, a little bit now. So this yeah. is a real business. You yeah, know, yeah, we're, we went from myself and my co-founder who gra we graduated last May. We're now at six employees. What? Um, oh wow, and, this is you know, great. We're being used in all fifty states. Uh, well, you this know. is a big deal. So, well, I yeah. mean, <laughs> wow, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Can we, like, buy shares in it or anything? <laughs> um, but, you know, we gave you uh, 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, we could do a side deal. No, I, uh, we'll, we'll probably raise more, you know, more money from investors in the future. But we're probably, you know, uh, past the stage of taking it from friends and family. So, so this is uh, a real deal. This is a really great idea you've had here. Uh, so thank this, you. So this education of yours is not a waste of time at all. Uh, no, not it's at all. It's all actually paying no, off. It, you have a business degree and you have an IT degree, and yeah. it sort of came together in this starting an IT business. Yeah, I mainly joke about that. Um, but uh, <laughs> school, school, if you you know, school, you have to have a passion for something before school actually kicks in. Now, if you're not sure what you're going to do, like school is obviously a good time to learn. But I think majority of people go to school as an excuse to find their passion. What have you um, got a passion for? Renting. 
No, I have a passion for solving problems uh, right. that I think are unjust. Uh, you know, I, I was in the military because wow. I wanted to, right. you know, serve people, and I just happened to find another area where I think people are being uh, mistreated, and, you know, I think I, I can make a change to it. Well, that's pretty damn awesome, isn't it? So here's the next it's question. A, yeah. Are yeah, you voting Sarah. for Bernie Sanders in the primary? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm not, I've never, even though I was in the military, like I've never uh, been a voter uh, in you my don't life. Vote? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not a voter. My co-founder, she's uh, very into politics and she what? helps me to vote. And la- Isn't la- that the reason that the we have a military so that we can it, live free I'd, and vote? I'd say it's kind of ironic, but um, yeah. it's just, I've never, never been into it. So I last, uh, Last election was the first time I voted um, because everybody was like all into it, and I was like, "Well, I guess I have to vote because like something's crazy is going to happen out of this election." Well, you're well, doing you're good right, out Bernie. in your realm. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you know, don't let your mind be occupied by this BS. So you're a Bernie guy, Aaron. Yeah, I'm a Bernie guy. Yeah. And what do you think the chances of that happening are now? Um, As well, of today, today is what how, is the date today? How in depth do we want to get in on, in on this? <laughs> Pretty subject. deep because it's National Wall I mean, Day. We've what? done a lot to we've done a lot to leftist governments in Central and South America. So the chances of us having a real left left government in the United States, I think probably probably are pretty slim. But I think he's awakened the consciousness in in the working class, and I think he's done a lot of good. And yeah, I mean, I feel optimistic about you know what he's done but i don't feel optimistic about his you know the system as it is do you think that he could bet bernie could beat trump if I, he I, gets, do, I do think he could beat trump yeah okay. i do what do you guys think about that Catherine? i think it's 50 50 you have to go on the record yeah. that's, that's that's a, that's a, that's pretty that's pretty fair yeah. well that is 50 50 technically because either he's going to win or lose <laughs> well, right. I know, but I, they're I both populist candidates yeah i don't right. have a strong feeling either you know way, right as far yeah. as who's going to win no psychic no. Intuition? No, I, I, it's kind of like the Aries Pisces thing. Right. Not so much. Who knows? <laughs> I, I do feel not confident so that Biden will lose against Trump. You think Biden I, I will think lose? I think Biden will lose to Trump. Yes, okay. I do. Mm-hmm. Because of what reason? Because we. There, there we go. <laughs> Thomas. I think because he's he's getting seems like he's getting senile a little he's, bit. He's I kind mean, of life doesn't his, know. His campaign has no energy. Know his wife from his sister. That's he the represents one. everything people yeah. voted against Hillary Clinton for. You know, he's got. Yeah. Well, people voted against Hillary Clinton because they didn't like her. Yeah. She was unlikable. She apparently. represented. Yeah. What's that? She won the popular. Vote. She did win the popular. Vote. Good she point, did. Sarah. She did. Yeah. It's true. Okay. Well, there is that. I just don't think I don't think he'll be Trump. I just don't think there's the enthusiasm behind the base, and I think I think that. So if we I'm don't, if we don't it. have Bernie, if Bernie doesn't make it as the candidate, I then think Trump, Trump is going to. I think Trump's going to get elected again. Either way, it doesn't matter who the candidate is. I think Bernie has okay. a shot. I don't think Biden has a shot. I'm not a professional. I'm just a. I'm just a. Uh, arm, just a woodworking armchair. musician. I'm just a woodworking musician, <laughs> woodworking saying musician. saying how I see it from 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 the vantage point of a working class person. You know. Okay. And that's that's how I see it. Biden doesn't have enthusiasm. Maybe maybe there's enough anti-Trump sentiment that that you know it'll work out. It's just impossible to tell what's going to happen. I mean, nobody knows. I mean, first of all, we well, have right because it completely who, changed in the last three days. Yeah, and then uh, we still have this yeah. coronavirus, which is going to wreak havoc on the country, whether anyone thinks that or not. And I mean, it's going to depend on how he handles it, too. Right. We don't have I mean, a federal yeah. response to it at all right, right. now. There's nothing. Right. So there's we'll ad hoc. Say. Completely ad hoc we'll response by state by state. Yeah. Speaking of so, the virus, what do yeah. you think about this? I thought this was very interesting. My son said, I'm waiting to wake up on Monday and uh, hear about all the cases in Louisiana because yeah. it'll be two weeks post Mardi Gras. Okay, but her son oh, that's school. a good one. He hates school and he wants he to. He does, <laughs> but. <laughs> like, that's what's really going on. Here. No, but, but he brings up a good point. We, we have a million right. people here for Mardi Gras. Yeah. Well, the key, to the, success, all over. the key to our success here in New Orleans and Louisiana is that we haven't tested anybody. But that's and, that's and why we have no virus. Well, what? The virus can't live in alcohol. That's true. It can't. Nope. No. Oh, well, then no one's got it here. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> then everybody's safe. Ah. The thing that people are afraid of, though, is that the Amazon packages are going through Seattle. And they're all yeah. That's, here. That's yeah. So brilliant. that's what people well, are freaking look, out about. Now look, my 11-year-old daughter, she's pretty smart too. She said, "Mom, don't order anything from China. Don't order anything from China right now to be delivered." And I'm like, "But that's just well, that's a insane. Good point. Well, it, it can't. A virus can't live on a package. Well, can it? it can for a little while, for a little but not while. for very long. Right. Not I mean, for long enough to get it from Seattle to your house. I would think not. I mean, Probably but not. the joke is like if you maybe use bubble wrap 
it's made in China, so don't pop the bubble wrap because. Wow, China. because oh, there could like be the, coronavirus yeah. in that's the bubble. That's some serious uh, in-depth paranoia. That, that. Yeah, yeah. Really, that's really a good one. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised in the next little while if there really is. There are thousands and thousands of Americans who have coronavirus, so we just haven't tested any of them. I'll and tell when you we what. find out, then everyone's going to flip out. Then we're going to have to stay home for a month. I tell you what, my mom caught this horrible. I don't know what it was. Some kind of viral thing with right. cold and flu STD and whatever. Maybe. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> My mom sneezing. Had it was Mardi Gras. No, 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 no. <laughs> Coughing, sneezing. I mean, you know, flew in your chest, whole thing. And proceeded to give it to everybody she came in contact with, including right. me. And it was pretty horrible. Right. So, I mean, she's like, man, she got I it? wonder. Right. You know? Well, she didn't get tested because you can't. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And do you know that if you want to get tested, you have to pay for it? Did you know that one? No, I didn't. Oh man. No. Oh really? It's you not covered. It? There's oh. no federal. That's well, There's no federal response at all. Hmm. Hmm. That's why I think this. There's a, anything could happen in the yeah, we'll see. next couple of months. Let's have another song, and then we're going to have a reading from the book. Okay. All right. Breed yeah. all about us. You by give Catherine me the, give me the and song Evan. after the death. The you death. The talk about death and disease. You and have a good song about death and disease. Oh, Lord, no, I don't think so. That's heaven. I don't even know what I'm going to play here right now. Do you, want, do you want a request? From my album? Yeah. If I can request one, sure, or are you just going to play one? Let's see. I'm not going to request it if you don't want request it. No, I'll take it, but if it's the one I can do well, I'll do it. But if okay, it's... Little Black Sheep. Do you know that one? Oh, yes. Is that like a good the, one to do? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. You like I, that I think one? I've ever requested a song ever on this show in the last how many years we've been doing this now. <laughs> You want to tell us a little bit about the song? Sure. So this song was written after an experience at the uh, Cajun Mardi Gras run out in Eunice in 20, 2015. You're chasing um, a chicken around. Yeah, and um, I, I got in a little scurry. We, I don't want to go into a long story about the Cajun run if people don't know about it. It's a little, um, there's vilans and they run around and they enforce the laws. And it's kind of like a satire of the um, of the uh, little trading places, picking picking fun at the aristocracy and the ruling class. Um, I can go I can go on for it, but I see we don't have much much time for we it. Have nine minutes. And so, um, my the the woman who's now my wife was dressed up as a little black sheep, and we we staged a revolution during the Mardi Gras run. And this song is kind of what kind of came out of out of it in um, you know in the way songs do in um, poetry. And, Well, I learned a little something about freedom lately. I learned a little something about giving it up to easy. They'd like to lock down this whole wide world. Listen, good boys, you gotta listen, good girls, from the cradle to the cross. Cradle to the cross, they hung him up high. He had some words for the boss. Now the spirit's gonna find. Spirit's gonna feel our like good hearts. It will. Hold them too tightly, pepper spray in the right force For shepherds gonna be defied Sing mighty cool to fire when you face your face Little black sheep are gonna rule this place From the cradle to the cross Cradle to the cross Little black sheep are gonna take on the boss Then the spirit's gonna find Spirit's gonna feel all good hearts Yes, I know it will Well, I wanna get together on a rainy day. Wanna make three wishes, wanna put them away. One for tomorrow, one for today. One to lay down upon my cold grave from the cradle to the cross. Cradle to the cross, little golden wishes going straight to the boss. Now the spirit's gonna find, the spirit's gonna feel our good hearts. Yes, I know it will. A little shortened version of it for you. <laughs> Okay. So it was inspired by. It's not exactly a story about that, but it's kind of what I took away from the experience, and you know. I, I think you're just so talented, don't you guys think? Oh, thank thank you, Grant. Thank you. Yeah. It's amazing. You're and a great songwriter and a great player. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's really, a, it's really yeah. a treat to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. 
I'll, I'll come back again if you ever want me. Yeah, well, yeah, we're here next week if you'd like to come back. <laughs> we'd love you to come back. I would love that. That would be great. Yeah, I got so, a whole bunch yeah. of new songs, and we're okay. going to be coming out with a new record hopefully sometime this year. Okay. And um, so, yeah, come back. So the home. album, the name of the band is Cactus Thief. Yeah, I've Cactus set, Thief. I've set, well, hang Thomas, what happened to my... Sorry. Sorry. The name of the band is Cactus Thief, and I've said that to a number of people today already, and they've misheard me. They think Cactus Steve? Yeah, something, I don't know what people are thinking. Cactus Chief? They're saying, what did you say? I have to say Cactus Thief. I'm like, oh. Maybe it's because, are you Australian? No, I'm from New Zealand. New Zealand? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's the worst insult <laughs> ever, but okay. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if that's the reason or not. Yeah, Cactus Thief. Cactus that's Thief. It. Yeah. Okay, and the name of the album that's currently out is called Two Bells. It's called Two Bells, yeah. And that's on Spotify and everywhere else that you can... Yep, it's on Spotify. If you come to show, you can buy it. And it's going to be pr- uh, printed on vinyl. I found some folks that want to print it on vinyl. On vinyl. Uh, yeah. So that's like, uh, like a thing now. Yeah, it's the immortal way to, to imprint your music. Yeah, they'll just and you live can forever. Sell, you can sell those that get gigs people, or something? People love them. I buy them. You know, if I really, yeah. if I really like a band and I want to hear the highest audio quality I, that I can oh. from that band, then I buy, a, buy the record. Okay, so the record is now the highest audio quality because the reason it, that we don't have records anymore is because they were well, inferior. Well, I think it's because they're cumbersome CD. and they're, they're hard to use, but really like the, the peak of analog technology is... Mm. is um, yeah. What do you listen to, Catherine? Do you have a record player? I don't, but that is what I asked for for my birthday. Which so, is coming up on March, March the, the 12th. 12th. Yes, I don't, but I do. Uh, How old are you going to be? 31. 31. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's horrible. I know, right? Getting old now. I know. Um, I do have several vinyl albums that I've bought. But you can't listen to them the, because right, you don't exactly, have a record player. Exactly. But, but because you love the artist, exactly, you wanted to because, have that. Right, right. So what have you got that you're going to get to listen to on your birthday? I mean, Sugarland, of course. the whole collection. Uh, I have some Rod Stewart. Album. Yeah. I do have a Rod Stewart album. Um, How did I know that? You know, here's what? here's a band you might have you heard of the band Birds of Chicago? Uh-uh. The singer, they're so good. I saw this band play Birds of Chicago. Here I am pl- plugging another band. Yeah, I saw okay. this band Birds of Chicago, and the singer reminds me of Rod Stewart. You should check them out. They have this okay. song called um, American Flowers. Okay. It's really beautiful. I'll check that out. Okay, that's good to know. A, have well, you heard from Rod lately? By the way, I have actually. What did he say? <laughs> he said, "Would you like to come to my tour this year? Here's some tickets." Oh my god. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Th- they, they probably didn't know she's. Now good friends with Rod Stewart. Oh, man. Good friends. If you hadn't figured that out, yeah. yeah. I am one degree or two degrees from Rod Stewart right now. What's your, yeah, right. Exactly. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So we're going in August. So, where to? Um, my friend Christy and I are going to Atlanta, and Darcy and I are going to Fort Worth. <laughs> the two Rod Stewart shows. We are. So, well, okay. And they're a week apart. What's He's your not, favorite so, Rod Stewart song? Probably Forever Young. Oh, all right. Probably, yeah, if I had to pick one. But he's not buying you air tickets. He's just giving you... No, I mean, we're driving, but... I'm You're right. driving? Okay. Yeah. It's really hard for me to fly. Oh, yeah, it's good point. It's more trouble than it's worth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how do you drive? Do you have, like... Well, you have I have a minivan. Um, and can... they drive. I don't drive. Right, I sit you're not driving. Back and play on my phone. Well, people who are just... <laughs> l- problem? People, people <laughs> who can't see you probably, don't, un- probably haven't got the message here. What are you, two foot seven? Yes. Yes. Last two foot seven. That's a good guess. Yeah. I, I know because it's written down here. It is. <laughs> I, you, I used to have been saying this for years. You're the shortest person in New Orleans. I wonder if that's true. I don't know. I wonder I how know. we would know that. Though. Yeah, I don't know. The last time, well, the first time we had this conversation was many years ago. You told me you were the same height as your golden retriever. No, not my golden retriever. What probably, was it? Probably my, probably my border collie. Maybe. Same height as the, your yeah. border collie. That is yeah. a funny way of putting it. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It does seem short. But I don't think of you as... When people ask me how tall I am, I usually say 6'3". <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. No, it's not true at all. I'm like 5'8 or something. But <laughs> mostly people don't question it. Nobody asks me yeah. how tall I am. They never ever ask yeah. how tall you are, really? Mm-hmm. You may yeah. go to the doctor and they don't say well, how tall Well, they don't have to ask me. They got that thing they can step in front of and... I always find they, they, they always ask at the doctor how tall are you. I say 6'3". They just write it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that crazy? So yeah. you could say the same thing and who would yeah. know? Seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, just say 6'3". Oh, yeah, 6'3". There you go. Yeah, no one's going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, listen, we've got to get the hell out of here. So before we do, I have to say thank you to a couple of people. Oh, I was going to get you to read something. So pick up the book. I want you to read one dog breed thing one out dog? of here. Okay. Yeah. 
But first of all, thank you to Basics on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Basics underneath sells fine lingerie and Basics Swimming Gym has a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes. With style and the Positive Vibrations Foundation too, thank you to them. They create and encourage community through the development, preservation of the arts, music, culture and heritage. And if you'd like to be a member of our Patreon family for as little as $1, you can go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour. And you too can be a member of our Happy Hour Patreon family and get free stuff. For example, a 4D chess game. That's just one thing you can get from... What is the name of that company? 4D. Factor 10. Mm -hmm. It's a fourth dimension. Yep, it's a fourth dimension. It's on the fourth dimension. Check it out on our Patreon page. Okay, Yvonne Crummins is going to read us one dog breed thing, and then we're really going to get out of here. What are you reading? Okay, I'm reading the beagle because I have one. Okay, what's your beagle's name? Ginger. Ginger the beagle, okay. I am sweet, I am gentle, I am love. I am happiest when I feel secure and have companionship. I can get noisy if left alone for too long. Just look at my tail to measure my constant joy, but be careful not to fuel me with too much food. My snout takes me on grand adventures, so make sure to keep me close to home. If you are looking for a faithful friend who is comforting and good for your soul, here I am. Oh, that's very nice. The beagle. Beautiful. That's Thank beautiful. you very much, Yvonne Crummins, co-author of Breed All About Us, Canine Expressions of Art and Voice, by you and Catherine Clematis, who's also been here making your fourth or is it fifth appearance? I don't know. Who knows? On Happy. You've been on every location of Happy Hour. We've been on everywhere from I the Collins so. Hotel, Casa Borrega, Wayfair, and now so, yeah, here so at the Maple four. Leaf. So, yeah, this, yeah, this is our fourth trip. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Well, we'll look forward to the fifth one. And I find, every time I meet you, I find out something about you. Now I know you're a two. Well, good. Yeah. No, I'm a three. A three. A three. I'm a three. Alive. A two, you'd be dead. I'd be yeah. dead, Just yes. Oh, okay, yeah. I am three. Alive. I have yes. to get that right. There's a very fine distinction, but, very fine. but worthwhile yes. making. And Marco <laughs> Nelson has been here, too, the creator of Rent Check. Yep. Thank which you. Which is, I'm excited to have met you because now we can all know someone who was before they became a billionaire. <laughs> we'll see. It's got to, I mean, $6 billion is just lying out there waiting for you to rake it off the table. Yep. How exciting. So we can go check it out at rentcheck.com. Get rentcheck.com. Get rentcheck.com. Yeah, the, the Someone rentcheck. else owns rentcheck. People, they want like 500K for that domain, and I'm, you know, we can't, can't do hey, that now. at some point, it won't be any big deal. Some you lady in it. Oregon just sitting on it for 20 years, not even using it. Pretty soon, 500K <laughs> won't mean shit to you. Don't Pro- worry about probably that. Probably not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll buy that eventually. And Aaron Maris has been here, too, from the band Cactus Thief. It's a new record coming out sometime this year. And currently, you can go get the current record called Two Bells Yep, you can get Spotify. it in March 12th, Carnival Lounge. Catch Steve and get a holiday. And Let's go. Yeah, doors at nine on the day after birthday party your there. birthday yeah. and on yeah. your birthday, Catherine. Let's all go there. Let's do it to Carnival Lounge to go see Catch okay. Steve and Gail Holiday. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank That's you. been Happy Hour for another week. Thank you. Thank the you. producer Thank of our show is Graham DePonte. Monique Pyle is our music producer. Our music consultant is Christian Henry Thomas Walsh is our technical director. Asher Griffith is normally our Facebook live feed director, but he's off sick with the coronavirus. So Andrew C Rock C Rock put this whole thing on Facebook Live today. Our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about one hour while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. Our address is on our website, it's neworleans.com, where you can check out many other happy hours that we made before today, as well as other shows we make here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Raschuti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tucker, and our award-winning podcast about death, called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.com. LA. You can keep up with us on a bunch of time-sucking social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you can remember your password. You can find those links on our website, itsneworleans.com. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Happy Hour Facebook page. These photos were taken today by Jill LaFleur, and you can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. If your podcast app has a share function, try telling a couple of friends about Happy Hour. Our show is recorded live today at the Maple Leaf on Oak Street in Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hours, a production of Ino Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. Andrew Duhon is on the road somewhere or other. You can find him at andrewduhon.com and see if he's in a town near you. So for, on behalf of Andrew, who will be back here next week, everyone else around the table here at the Maple Leaf and back at our office at Ino Broadcasting, thanks for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I'll see you back here next week for more Happy Hours.